Hey everybody, and welcome to this, uh, let's just say, day late, dollar short version of the Blizzard Watch podcast. Due to circumstances beyond my control and beyond, I think, the other two's controls. If they can control these kind of things, then I don't know what's going on, guys. you got to stop doing that. Uh, <laughs> but we've got ourselves a podcast. We're going to talk about a bunch of various things. Um, Joe is just showing off some of his art, which is really cool, by the way. Uh, Joe's a good artist. And uh, hmm, let's just try and get through some of this stuff as fast as I can. The first thing I want to mention is because it immediately grabbed me when I saw it was that for from September 1st to September 5th, Diablo 4 is going to have itself a 25% increase to XP and gold drop uh, weekend, which they used to do quite frequently in Diablo 3. This is the first time they've done it in D4. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's a bad idea. In fact, I think they should just go ahead and and make that baseline and then for the weekend up at another 25 percent. what i'm saying is it's too hard to get to max level and it like, seems it's a slog guys i'm sorry but it is it's very grindy it really is and it seems especially punishing when you're playing in a season you've got three months to you know the diablo team themselves admitted that it would take 150 hours to get to max level and that's insane that's a lot of time in three months for people who do things other than play Diablo. Yeah. Which I, I am one of those people. Oh yeah. I think everybody is. Um, even people who like don't have responsibilities still do other things than play Diablo. Like they take mm -hmm. in food and air and sleep, <laughs> things like that, you know? Uh, but yeah. So I want to mention that one first. Speaking of that one though, uh, we've got various things you can get via, I think these are all, Amazon Prime. I don't think there's These any Twitch These are all stuff Amazon Prime, though we have had an announcement of an announcement of a Twitch drop coming later yeah. this week. For, right, guys, uh, please, Warcraft. Please, stop, please stop doing the announcements of your announcements. They, they make me crazy, but uh, yeah. here we are. Welcome to the leftover hype train cycle. Yeah, <laughs> um, we'll just get right into what, what, what we can actually pick up. The first one that's listed here, the, which is one that I've made use of, so I know it exists, um, there's a tier skips you can get on Amazon Prime for Diablo 4 Season 1. Basically, you can skip four of those, you know, tiers. You could also call them levels, whatever you want to call them. But, but the, basically, the Battle Pass has tiers, and if you get all of the tiers done, I think it's like 90 for the whole thing, or is it 80? <sighs> think yeah. it's 90 i'd have to double yeah. check i think it's 90 we're gonna go with 90 if it turns out i was wrong then you know whatever math is hard but regardless there, that's a lot like i got to 45 and i was like i feel tired i'm just mm -hmm. tired whenever i log on so yeah I, I used the four tier skips and that was nice and i got i got a nice hat out of it but i definitely think that it's it's worth getting because you know again it's amazon prime gaming is in my opinion the superior way to do it uh well you technically have to pay for prime but if you've got prime yeah. anyway then you might Why as well, not? you know, get the stuff that they're giving away. And you don't have to watch like six hours of anything on Twitch, which sounds easy until you're trying to do it. <laughs> and then it's like, um, okay, I, I can't sit here for six hours ever. I, I don't, I have a dog to walk guys. I, I know this, <laughs> this can't happen. So yeah, I, I do appreciate it. But in addition to the tier skips, uh, apparently WoW has got the Tab Art of Brilliance, which is available also through Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never heard of the Tab Art of Brilliance, but but Liz helpfully put new next to it. So I'm hoping that means that she can tell me what it is. Um, It's not, it's a new promotion, but it's not new to the game. It's it's a black and white tabard. So uh, maybe it will fit your, like the black and it white transmog you've been trying to complete. It's a it's a recolor of the ones that used to be available uh, from the TCG. So people who remember the Warcraft TCG, you used to get cards that would give you points. So you would redeem them uh, on the web on the website of Upper. I think it was Upper Deck. I'm pretty sure it was Upper Deck. I'd have to look. Um, and then you could take uh, so many of those points and you can purchase tabards. And there was multiple colors of them. So it's the same design, um, but there was white, yellow, red. Uh, I think there was a inverse of the black and white one, uh, greens, all et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I have a ton of them because I bought way too many TCG cards. <laughs> uh, so I already have a white one, but it's uh, ostensibly the same thing. Oh, no, wait a minute. Actually, it's not. Now that I'm thinking about it. The silver one was the one that you were able to get with that. This is this is a new coloration. All right, cool. Uh, but also um, the calendar Grand Prix is still happening. It's. I think it's stopping on the fourth of, of September. So I would yeah, say that's they, next Sunday. 
Uh, no, that would be next Monday. Uh, next Monday. It's gonna be. It's gonna go away with reset. Yeah, so it's it, next Monday. They extended it a week. It was supposed to end on reset this week, but they pushed out next week. So if you are listening to this, you still have a little, a little time to go complete your calendar Grand Prix and uh, collect some cool, like aviator themed transmog for it. But is it glasses? If it's aviator glasses, I'm in. Aren't there? They're like some goggles, right? They're like some goggles. Yeah, but they don't do like anything. Goggles. Yeah, but I want to be. I want it to be Eric Estrada and Wow. <laughs> well, my friend, I can only salute you. Um, I have nothing bad to say about Eric Estrada. I love chips as a kid. Thought that show was great. We have we have um, the motorcycles. I just don't have the aviator glasses. Yeah, I I do want to come back to the Twitch drop preview that they announced. Mm-hmm. I, uh, criticizing aside the whole idea of announcing that you will do an announcement, which is just as, as both of, of these fine folks have mentioned, it's ubiquitous now. Like that's just, it's just what happens. Um, like you, you, all the times we were told, Oh, there'll be a dev live stream next week. And then we are all like, yay, dev live stream. But that's basically just them telling us that next week they'll tell us stuff. Hey guys, mm-hmm. I want to, I want to let you know that we're at the end of this podcast. We're going to announce that we're going to have another podcast next week. Ooh. Whoa. But to get back to it, what do you think? they're going to announce i mean like what what could they possibly be bringing out as a twitch drop i mean i have no idea i know that uh, isn't next month gonna be 10.1.7 at this point uh next week matt next week. it's okay. next week but it's next, next month <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's going to be on tuesday so by the time we do the next podcast 10.1.7 will probably be live depending on how many server snafus there are but probably Almost it's certainly, a, yeah, it's at least in the in the cards. Mm-hmm. For it to have. Also, um, this Friday, I think the the new trading post for WoW is going to drop the September trading post. I, I have not. Looked oh, at it. I didn't finish that. Dag nabbit. Yeah, go, go log on. You have you have like twenty four more hours, thirty six, something like that. Grumble. Well, don't log on right now. No, Look, well. like, you know, after after we're done, you can go log on. <laughs> I mean, you can log on. Just like make sure the recording's still going. If you want to just suddenly drop out and occasionally grunt back at things, that'd be cool. I think you already did it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's so. That's um, the September trading post is coming in. Ooh. Go ahead. You, we didn't answer your question though. What my question? About I what they could possibly what they could possibly announce for the, oh, the yeah. prime gaming stuff. What do you think it's going to be? More wild so TCG loot. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that, <laughs> well, tracks. Oh, there's a lot of that coming through the trading post too. Some of it is, but like I mean, this one's a this one's a, a Twitch drop, so they've been all over the map for what they're doing. With these, but I mean, they, a lot of this is old things or things that haven't been available in North America, European realms, uh, like the adorable pig pet. That was something that was only previously available in Asia. So there, we're we're seeing a lot of old stuff or recolors of old stuff that you couldn't get. Yep, I mean, if the Goblin Weathermaker showed back up as an item, I would not be upset. But, like, there was a lot of items that they still haven't gone through. Um, I I recommend taking a look at, like, the list sometime. Like, we're talking mounts, pets, uh, toys, uh, consumable items like the Path of Illidan, which, like, let you uh, carry a, a... You consumed it, and then you, as you moved, green fire went in your, your wake. Um, mm-hmm. Goblin Gumbo, where you put it down and then you ate it, and then it uh made you and everybody who ate it randomly belch green fire every like couple seconds for five minutes. There's a lot of stuff that they could put from the TCG loot onto there, and I think it would make a lot of sense. But like Liz said, but it's a lot of old stuff. One thing to keep in mind is this is probably going to be a promotion tied in the 10.1.7. Which oh, will yeah. be going live on Tuesday. So it's probably going to start. My, I would expect it to start on Tuesday and, uh, you know, focus on people streaming 10, 1, 7. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. maybe we get something kind of, kind of fitting into that theme. We're going to get the Dream Surges events, which model, are going to be. The model drink uh, would make a real good addition right there. Just saying. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, we might get some. Maybe we could get something cool and new that's tied into what we're seeing in 10, 1, 7. What I'm hearing is pet. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. I'm choosing to just allow myself to think it's going to be a cute cat, a cute green cat. That would be nice. Mm-hmm. Um, they used to have like a little green cat pet, and I don't know if they still do. The other day, I was looking at all this stuff from the secrets discords, including the uh, the the weird ghosts 
cat that was coming around. And I think it was like, was it Shadowlands or was it the end of Battle for Azeroth? I can't remember, but I was looking it was at that leading, It was leading into Shadowlands because it was the ghost of Bigglesworth or something like that. Yeah, some weird ass thing like that. Yeah, it, it, was, it was very cute, although it had t- black tentacles which for some people will just make it even cuter and for other people like me not so much uh but tomorrow um tomorrow we're going to be getting something that starts up in in world of warcraft uh the secrets of azeroth which is the thing i was just talking about the thing i wrote about um that's going to go from tomorrow to the 13th of september which is two weeks maybe maybe specify the date because oh, yeah, we don't know there. when people will be listening to this yeah, it's starting um, on the 31st of August, which is tomorrow as we're recording, but obviously you might be in the future. Um, mm. And it's ending on September 13th. So you've got about two weeks to get in. There's going to be a new clue as to what's going on with the, with the Secrets of Azeroth, a new, uh, basically new breadcrumb pointing you along the pathway to figuring out what's going on. I said in the article that it reminded me an awful lot of like, where in the world of Warcraft is Carmen San Diego? <laughs> uh, it does definitely kind of have that vibe. Like, you know, you're there's someone stealing, you know, magical artifacts all over Azeroth and you can get on the trail and hunt them down <laughs> and get stuff for it. Uh, it. It certainly has elements of the old secrets uh, finding stuff that they, you know, mm-hmm. put in, except those didn't have announcements. In fact, they very rarely even told us they were there. They just yeah. let it, left it for us to find out that they were there. Um, whereas this is straight up telling you, oh yeah, this stuff's here and there's rewards and here's what the reward, some of the rewards are. Uh, two of the rewards that I'm going to mention just because I'm sure, A, because I, I remember them, and B, because I'm sure that these <laughs> will be exciting to people, is there's a, an alpaca named Patty the Alpaca, who is a white alpaca, very stylish if you like riding alpacas. And then there's Tobias, who is a little puppy. And apparently at some point you can get a deerstalker cap that goes on your pet and your mount and you, <laughs> which, I mean, if you're going to be getting a it. deerstalker pop, yeah, you're going to get a deerstalker cap that should be going on your puppy. Uh, that's just, that's just logic. That's just science. Um, but yeah, that's, that, that's happening again. Uh, it's, I, it's, go ahead. I, I do want to jump in and say, this is there. You're going to get new clues every day through, through September 13th, but that's not like the, you, you can still complete it after September 13th. Yeah. They've it just that. unfolds. So, it just yeah. unfolds over the two weeks. And then after the two weeks, if you decide you don't care during the two weeks, but you decide later and you want to, you can just plow through the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, this so is just, just a way to keep people from plowing through the whole thing right away. Yeah. So just don't, don't feel stressed out that you're going to miss it. There's no time, at least not that I'm aware of. Yeah. Yeah. It's, just, it's again, it's less, uh, it's less a, you know, get this done in two weeks or else and more, uh, Hey, pace yourself, little guy. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't try and get it all in one day. You're going to pass out. Um, which is sometimes quite frankly, a, a good thing to do in World of Warcraft. Um, we mentioned briefly that nine point, uh, not nine point one. Sorry, uh, <laughs> ten point one point seven is going to drop next week on 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 uh, Thursday. I know we know it's got the Dream Surge events, um, which are basically Tuesday. Sorry, Thursday. My God, time is so weird. Time I is do, so. I weird. have no idea where I am anymore. I'm like a particle. I've been quantum sure. entangled, and I can't tell you what's going on. We're recording a day late, and it's like. Everything yeah. about time is now wrong. It's wrong. I, I was half expecting some gigantic announcement today, mm. like or some gigantic announcement tomorrow. Like, yeah, I guess that makes more sense. They usually put it out after we do things. So yeah, they probably decided mm-hmm. to. And hey, we are getting the uh, announcement of the Twitch thing. So hey, there maybe that's it. But yeah, the the dream surges are coming in. Those are really kind of cool. They're sort of uh, on the one hand, if you don't like uh, Dragonflight's ten- tendency to add another grind in. Mm. To, to get catch-up gear that I could see it being a problem. I think it's pretty cool because it's basically one of the biggest complaints a lot of us have about MMO storytelling in general and World of Warcraft specifically is that when something happens, we don't get closure anytime soon. Like The mm. stuff doesn't get resolved for a very long time. So I like that the Dream Surge event is happening because it is some more... It's more along the path of the story of, of the night elves and what happened to them when their tree got burned down, which I'm happy about just because I, I tend to play night. Um, and, and so that's good for me, but I also think it's cool because it ties into the story of this expansion. I'm not spoiling anything. There's a video out now that you can watch. that's kind of like an in-game cinematic trailer that it's going to be there. And it basically shows you good old fire rack again, Matt Mercer being everywhere this month. Um, <laughs> I mean, seriously, guys on Critical Role, guys doing Fire Act, guys doing Minsk and Baldur's Gate 3. Yep, he's the voice of Minsk. 
He's literally everywhere. I swear to God, I half expected to see him outside going, hey, can I borrow a cup of sugar? <laughs> uh, but that's not a complaint, just just a fact. He's everywhere. Um, but in addition to all that, uh, I think I'm most excited about the fact that they're, we, we are almost to 9.2. It's crazy. Yeah, and, and we have no idea what 9.2 is going to be or when it's going to be. I mean, if it goes along the speed that everything else has been going, then it's now like a month or two months away, right? Two months, right? Yeah, two months, two months. So, so probably it, November, which is certainly. BlizzCon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you guys think we're going to get it before BlizzCon or after BlizzCon? After. After, absolutely after. Do you think the BlizzCon it, presentation he, will be about that patch? Mm, I no. think really, because I think they, I think they would if, if the patch is yeah. sufficient data. I think they would have at least something for it. I don't know that it'd be like yeah. the chief announcement. No, I mean, I think patch uh, ten point uh, two is going to have to come out. Sorry. Yeah, going to have to come out pretty soon after BlizzCon. You know, they're kind of doing they're doing patches in the first week of the month, first or second. So, you know, if we count down two months from the uh, patch 1017, uh, 1017 is going out on September 5th. That would put uh, that would put 10.2 right at BlizzCon. So I strongly suspect we're going to get a, a 10.2 like right after BlizzCon. I mean, we might have it right so, during BlizzCon though, too, is another thing. Oh uh, yeah, also true. Right, because they, they ha- think, they've done that in the past. Mm-hmm. I think the the ten point two stuff we're gonna know it before BlizzCon. We're have official before BlizzCon, which is why I'm really curious to know what's gonna happen for World of Warcraft at BlizzCon because it seems like bad timing for patch because it's gonna be right there with ten point two unless they really delay ten point two. That makes me wonder if we're going to get one of the two possibles. I'm going to see which one you guys uh, think is more likely. Either we'll get some kind of announcement on what comes after 10.2, which would mean either a 10.2.5 or news about a 10.3. Like if we're going to get a 10.0. Um, and the other possibility is the next expansion. Mm-hmm. I can almost which, guarantee we're going to hear something about the next expansion. Yeah, because um, sometimes we don't. I mean, I'm trying to think about the last time we didn't, but it does still kind of feel like we might not. I mean, I don't know that we'll have a whole lot, but I think they may announce like what the title is and what like some of the core concepts are. But I don't think it's going to be like it's not going to be another Mist of Pandaria where it's like, here's the announcement. By the way, you can go play the demo now. I think it'll Mm -hmm. be more of a here's where we're going next. And I, I would be very surprised if we don't, um, because it seems like they've kind of hit their stride with. This expansion really has sort of driven home. We talk about how much content they're pushing out, how quickly they're pushing it out. And I personally think that the quality has been there at the very least. Maybe mm-hmm. not to everybody's standards, but it's been pretty good. And there's been a lot of, of stuff released in each each patch. So I can imagine that moving forward um, into the other things, uh, you know, having the next patch announcement and then having, by the way, after we're done with, you know, the Dragon Isles, uh, you here, we're going to move into this. So maybe we get like the next huge patch announcement. Maybe they test surprises with a, uh, you know, here's the interstitial patch where you get all these extra stuff. Maybe we get another Ruby sanctum esque like interlude, and then it moves into whatever the next expansion is. So I, I think we're going to hear something about it there. It just may, for whatever reason, it just sticks in my brain is making sense. Okay, Liz? Blizzard Blizzard does like to r- come out of the gate with like a big trailer when they're announcing an expansion. So it's possible we could go in with like a big trailer of what's coming next. And, uh, you know, almost no more information. Because we're still going to be a ways out from an expansion at this point. At I'm least that's what I would expect. I'm personally curious as to what the uh, cinematic is going to have Stony Danza do next. <laughs> yeah, if it's, maybe, not, if it's not holding me closer, I don't want to know. Maybe maybe next expansion is all about the adventures of Stony Danza because we could all use more of that. <laughs> the best part is he's going to have lightning troll on his shoulder. <laughs> What's Zap, his kid's Zap, name? Zappy, Zappy, Z- Zappy boy. Yeah, Zappy boy. What's his Z- actual name? Zakan. Zarkon. Zarkon. Okay. Yeah, he'll have him on his shoulder. Zappy <laughs> and boy be- and Stony Danza, the buddy cop movie, <laughs> the one I've always wanted, but you know we haven't gotten yet. Blizzard, make it happen. It'll be like. Uh, It'll be basically like Titanfall because somebody joked. I think it was Calchius, uh, Chris. He he, he uh, joked 
that they were going to do World of Warcraft Titanfall because, you know, all the Titan stuff in this expansion and all the people who have decided the Titans are evil. And I just posted a picture of uh, BT and, and the, you know, the pilot from Titanfall 2 and just yelled BT because Matt Mercer had to yell BT a lot in that. And I'm, I'm just imagining they get Mercer to voice Zakon and he's just going, Stony constantly as a, it's Tony gets into danger it, it'll depend on how well uh armored core 6 does if armored core 6 does really really well we're gonna get that we're gonna get the mech expansion we always wanted i right. i've Go been ahead. looking forward to that and like the the tinker class that's all focused on mechs and um, mechanics yeah i'm there i'm there i'm into it it's gonna really tick off hunters when the tinker class gets all the mechanical pets Mm-hmm. Oof, they're going to be mad. It's going to be warlocks all over again. You know what? I think it's fair since all the hunters keep stealing my dang healing trinket. They can deal with not having pets for once. I'm looking at you, Ado. What, what's the what healing trinket? I'm curious now. Neltharian's call. Uh, shaman oh, shaman right, and hunters yeah. are on the same thing. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Okay. Rude. Uh, very rude. But, but when we do need to talk about something that I had not remembered to talk about, but Liz pointed out that we've now got the uh, anomalies for the Hearthstone Battlegrounds season five. So Liz, you since you mentioned this and we said we should talk about this and you're the one who knows about it. Uh, the thing is we, we had anomalies for a, a week, week and a half now, but apparently uh, the Hearthstone team is rolling out new anomalies in Hearthstone Battlegrounds season five every week. So we got three brand new ones this week. This kind of promises a crazy season five because every week, if they keep if they keep coming out with new ones every week, every week is going to be different. Um, so the three new ones are Big League. Only Tavern Tiers 3, 4, 5, and 6 exist. So you're going to start with these higher level minions. These are games that are probably going to go faster because everyone's going to have the more powerful stuff right from the start. And everyone's going to rush to Tier 6 to get those most powerful minions way faster than usual. Little League, where only Tavern Tiers 1, 2, 3, and 4 exist, um, which kind of the opposite. You're going to build, you know, you're going to kind of Zerg rush everything. You're going to build an army with uh, tiny minions that you can buff up in lots of ways. I expect a lot of Murlocs, Elementals, those have lots of little minions that can be powered up, even at low tiers. And everything's on fire, which is at the start of the game. Everyone takes 30 damage. And uh, whenever another hero dies, everyone regains five health. So uh, those could be some real quick games since everyone starts with uh, 40 health by default. So yeah, it's one of the things I really love about Anomalies this season is every game is totally different. You know, sometimes games can feel really samey. You know, they might have a different selection of minions. You're going to get different RNG. But, uh, you know, this everyone feels, every match feels really different because, you know, big league match where you only have high level minions, that feels really different from a little league match where you only have low level minions. So I've been having a lot of fun with this. Uh, if you've been playing Battlegrounds, be sure to log in, you know, every week because it's going to be different every week. I'm sitting here thinking about possible new ones that could come out next and i don't know enough about hearthstone to come up with anything that makes sense but yeah it's still kind of a really interesting feature it, it kind of almost feels like something that they could turn into a game mode mm. like you know you could actually ha just have you could have this be permanent if people like want to do it in the next expansion or whatever you could still have it as a kind of mm -hmm. game mode but then again look hearthstone trips and, and like stubs its knee and turns that <laughs> into a game mode it's like you know hey you look like a lost little kitten. Hey, I'm a different kind of game mode. Oh, well, get in the trench coat, buddy. There's plenty of room. <laughs> we might not develop you very much after this, but we'll keep you around for a while. I mean, you know, poor went out for uh, mercenaries, I guess. Uh, yeah, well. Uh, but I was... honestly do think, I think it was, who was it? Was it Joe? Was it you said this? It might have been Joe or it might have been you. Somebody said um, that mercenaries was too much and not enough like Battlegrounds. <laughs> like it was just it was just in that uncanny valley of this is not like battlegrounds but it's enough like battlegrounds in people's heads that nobody is playing it this is not my and, beautiful battleground yeah yeah it, it, i mm -hmm. kind of felt like that was happening with it i'm wonder i'm just still wondering when hearthstone's gonna finally uh start doing what magic is doing and getting like all these licensed things into it like they did a little thing with a diablo thing in mercenaries yeah. i think and i'd love i'd love with to see them start bringing in cards from other blizzard games well there's been a diablo thing in uh battlegrounds too where diablo was a playable hero and uh no one liked 
Yeah. Diablo was not fun to play with. So I don't it's know. Just because the Diablo card much. wasn't good, though. It's not because Diablo. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The, answer the British announcer. It was a very bad idea. Um, so do it again. No, I mean, honestly. Me. I'm uh, announcing that. Honestly, putting everything in, like, from their other IPs, I think it was fine. And I would, I'm surprised that they haven't done more with it. Like, I'm surprised. The biggest surprise for me is we haven't randomly had uh, StarCraft crossovers mm-hmm. to keep the IP kind of alive. Oh, yeah. You're not you're not wrong there, buddy. Like, I'm, I'm very surprised with that. And doing crossovers with Diablo, I think, is fine. Um, but we'll never see other outside IPs because of how corporates work. Well, yeah, you know, I didn't mean outside ips i meant the the, the ips they have because they have enough of them that it's surprising to not use them. yeah i mean the the, the bloodthorn i mean sorry blackthorn black the blackthorn <laughs> you know, the blackthorn expansion by itself would just be a yeah like i am gonna make blackthorn happen guys and even, the, even if they're not cards even if they're just like champion skins or something like that i'm very surprised we haven't seen it yet yeah i mean me too but um Okay, I'm trying to think if there's anything else since we've we've covered that one. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, we didn't talk about Diablo three season twenty eight because that's ending on the tenth of September. You know, that's a, yeah, that's and then I guess we'll have like an either seven or five days. Usually, it's either five or twelve days. It's either yeah. five days because it stops on Sunday and the next one starts on a Friday, or it's twelve days because it, it takes all the way to wrap around again. Um, and I don't know which it's going to be, but yeah, I do they know. Haven't, yeah, they haven't, they announced, haven't announced. They haven't announced the season twenty nine start date. Just yeah. season eight end date. Yeah, which is you know, it's still more than we knew. So yeah. you know, yeah. 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 But um, I am interested because season twenty nine is going to be the last season with with new content. I mean, they're not going to be doing that after this. This is the this this is the ultimate season, for lack of a better word. Because after this, the the, the following seasons will basically be. Didn't they describe them as like remixes? Yeah. 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 So who knows how that how that'll work? Like I don't know if they're going to be like saying, "Oh, hey, Treasure Goblins and the Season of the Tempest." Let's jam that together. I, I you know, they did it the first time with the Season of the Tempest, so sure, why not? But regardless, um, I am interested to see it. I am interested to find out when it's going to be. I'm also, I don't know. I feel a little melancholy about Season Twenty Eight ending because it was a complicated season. It was like this is the season. You, you know, it actually felt like they were going out with that one. Yeah, it really yeah. did. It was that big. The whole uh, um, altar of rights system, the seals that you have to unlock by, like you know, by doing bounties and occasionally destroying an incredibly powerful artifact that you would have used to make much gold and or you know killed lots of ponies. Um, it was a it was an out there season. I'm I'm interested to see how they revamp it because they're bringing it back in season thirty. Um, but for season twenty nine, it won't be around. Uh, the altar of rights will be going away at the end of season 28 and it will be returning whenever season 30 comes. Uh, that's what they said. So it was as to that, you know, I'm interested to see what changes they make. Cause they did say they're making changes. I'm interested to see how the game functions with the changes they're bringing into um, the, the way Paragon works in Diablo three. I'm interested to see how a, a changed Paragon system and then the altar of rights on top of that will change the way the people who, decide to keep playing Diablo three play Diablo three uh, because it is a pretty, it's a, it, like I said, complex is a, is a nice word for it. Uh, I can't use words like, you know, there's certain four letter words I can't use to describe it, but I normally <laughs> would, uh, you know, cause it not, and not because it was bad just because those words are incredible adjectives. They work for a variety of things. Um, and the sheer, the complexity of the altar of rights. I remember the first time I saw it, I was thinking to myself, Am I going to even get halfway through this? Like, how? How am I going to do this? And in case you're wondering, I didn't get to the end mm-hmm. of it. I did get more than halfway through it. A lot. But I I forget which one stopped me. I think it was probably the puzzle ring one. Because an ancient mm-hmm. legendary puzzle ring just never dropped. It's like, you know, if, if it doesn't drop, I can't proceed. It's like, I have to have the ancient legendary puzzle ring. And I don't. It's just not here. Um. So, yeah. But, you know, we'll see what they do when that comes around. Uh, either of you have any ideas on this one, or should we just move on to try and answer some questions? No, let's go into questions, I think. I think All we've right. covered this one. Yes. Okay. 
Uh, we will do that. Again, guys, we've done this before. If you've got a question for the show, uh, please send it to podcast at blizzardwatch.com with a subject line podcast of Blizzard Watch so we know it's for the show. Or you can go to our Discord. We've got two channels. One is for non-patrons because we like want everybody to ask us questions. Uh, that's just the Q and Podcast Questions channel. Anybody can go on in there and ask a question, and I will be scouring it pretty pretty regularly, so I might you know see it. I mean, I'm certainly trying to. Uh, or you can go to the Patreon Q and Podcast Questions channel because we also, you know, we, we like to get patrons the chance to ask us questions for the reason that they are patrons and thus help keep everything going around here, which makes it a lot easier to do a podcast. Uh, quite it's true. But with that out of the way, um, I'm going to try and do this myself so that Joe and Liz don't have to read the things because, you know, they have to think about the answers. And that's already <laughs> kind of hard because sometimes these questions are, the, 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 we only got two questions this time, but they're pretty involved. So, well, the first one is, um, hi y'all. This one is from Gavlin. I think it's pronounced Gavlin. He didn't put a pronunciation guide in. So Gavlin, uh, yeah, if, if you wanted to pronounce it, it's our friend Gavlin. We like Gavlin. Yeah. Uh, but hi y'all. I'm sad. After such incredible fanfare, everyone I know has stopped playing Diablo four for many of them who were much further into the end game than I was, I got on my eternal character. The reasons seem to break down to a tedious, unrewarding grind without any aspirational challenges to work towards. I switched to the season without even finishing exploring sanctuary and doing side quests. And my big problem has been the break in immersion by having to make a new character when I'm not really mm -hmm. connected to that is more or less checking off a list in order to progress in a single quest. Uh, what do you think needs to change to make the incredible game that we experienced through the campaign and up to about level 50 extend into the end game and into the seasonal content? Uh, so going to aim this one at Liz first, because I know we've talked before about these kind of things and she has some ideas. So Liz, I mean, I think, I don't think the Diablo 4 grind is unrewarding. I think it feels really good to continue collecting gear and to play with weird builds you can get as you collect different uniques. And I love the customization of builds and slotting in new uniques. And it's actually kind of fun to have added uh, the malignant hearts to that, which add another layer of customization. And you can kind of twist your characters in different directions with all of these different customizations. But the problem is, the problem I've had with Diablo 4 is that, you know, I was having so much fun on my non-seasonal character. I was having a blast. I had this really strange kind of frost build necromancer with a focus on freezing things. And it was just, it was weird. It was a lot of fun. And I was building up towards some things. I was looking for the right combination of uniques and items to like really, really capitalize on all of this stuff I'd built. And then season one comes along and it's like, oh, well, I can't, I can't play that. Anymore. That's gone. That's gone. I mean, I could play it, but I wouldn't be able to do all these seasonal things. I got to start over. I got to start from scratch. And I decided I wanted to play a Necro again. I'd try something a little different. I'd try a different build. But every time I log on to play it, I'm like, wow, I really wish I could keep working on my old Necro. I really wish I could yeah. keep playing that because I was having a lot of fun with all the stuff I collected, the customization, I'd everything I'd set up. I was, I was getting to the point in the game where I was really going to like finish that off. You know, I was really getting to that. I didn't level a 100 on the eternal round before season one started. Cause it's, it's a lot, it's a lot to level. I, and I, it just, I go ahead. Sorry, Liz. It just felt like I was throwing all of that away and I haven't made as much progress in season one because of it. I and think I'm actually, yep. Go on. Go on. I was going to say, I think that's the big thing. And everybody that I've talked to that's stopped playing or has sort of lost interest in it, everybody has said essentially the same thing. It's like, well, you know, in order to experience any of the new stuff, I have to roll a new character and I'm not invested in that character. So mm -hmm. interestingly enough, Diablo four is in a weird place, which is the first time I think a Diablo game has really ever been here where the campaign and everything you do is very rewarding for your main character and works to make you feel invested in your main character. And that's fantastic, right? Like, don't get me wrong. That's, that's what I like in ARPGs nowadays. Um, you know, back in the olden days, I would always love to roll multiple characters and the grind didn't bother me. 
but I still always had my favorite. Like when Diablo two and the expansion came out, my Druid became my main and I spent all the time getting every piece of gear I could for him and getting them out to the, not because it wasn't really a level thing. It was a gear thing, getting the perfect rune words, getting the, the gold gear, which was like the, the named set items that, you know, they were super ultra like rare. And that was my main, that was the thing that I would go to and just have fun with my friends and, and go play. And I was invested in that character, but I still had a bunch of other ones because the game really leaned that way. And Diablo three was that way too, at least for me. And, and, and I think for Matt to a little, to an extent, and maybe for you, Liz, where I could roll a million characters in Diablo three, because mm-hmm. it, that's just kind of way the game was built. It didn't really feel like I had a really a major investment in any one character. Uh, I think I had like eight monks or something like that, like a <laughs> bunch of demon hunters. Like I would just roll new characters and then I occasionally I would just delete characters and make new characters and start over again. But in Diablo four, everything from the campaign, everything from the story, everything from the very first time you start your character from the very first cinematic all the way through is making you care and pay attention to your main character in much the same way an MMO does. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think that is the part that seasons miss out on. And that draws players out because it pulls them out of the engagement. And, and I can't speak for everybody, but again, for me, this is a huge thing. I legitimately just want to play seasonal content with my Druid, my main Druid, the one that I've played everything with so far. And the fact that I can't Mm -hmm. just makes me not want to play. Yeah, I, I I think both of you are hitting upon something that I've been thinking about for a while. Um, in that Diablo 4 was so successful at making us feel like it had an engaging story and we're, we're interested in where that story was going and what we did to get ourselves through it. Even though there's not like a lot of choice in Diablo 4, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. but there's a lot of personal stakes in it. You, your character is dragged into this... Um, in the beginning, they're they're force fed, you know, Lilith's petals, and then the, the entire game is like you trying to get ahead of her. And when you finally manage to and confront her and you know fight her, it it feels like an accomplishment. Yeah, it feels like something mm-hmm. you did. And since there's dialogue, like I don't know if you guys did um, the season on a character that's actually completed the uh, campaign yeah. or not. Yeah. If you do, there's the whole bit where he's saying, you know, you did this, you did that. And I'm sitting there going. Well, yeah, but I did it before with a different character, and and quite frankly, that was the better character. Mm-hmm. I, you know, it's like, hey, I'm I'm level one over here. Don't put, don't read too much into this. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of like you know, even when you do it on a character who has finished the campaign again, mm-hmm. uh, there's a dip. There's always going to be a bit of a weirdness to okay, I had to finish the campaign again, but since I'm trying desperately to get the campaign finished so I can get to the seasonal content i'm not staying and playing this yeah i'm not experiencing it again i'm not noticing new stuff i am steamrolling my way through i am going okay it's actually faster if i do if i do a bit of season one of 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 act one that i jump straight into act two and just blow through that and then i do act three and then i go back and finish act one that's that i'm all set to go to act four you know and it's like it, it, you're you're plotting it. You're you're like you've you know, got the John Madden billboard out. You're drawing maps of sanctuary <laughs> and like going Bing 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 Bing. And you're not. The great thing about Diablo Four when I played through it the first time was that I didn't do that. I just played. I I did side quests. I noticed like environmental storytelling and dialogue options and and all this interesting stuff that isn't there when you are just plowing through it as mm-hmm. fast as possible so you can get the seasonal stuff. Yeah. And I, and I think I mentioned that when they first announced seasons that it, it, it felt weird to me that with the choice that they were making, because it felt like a choice of this is just how you do Diablo games or seasons in Diablo, because this is what we did in Diablo three. And then they moved on and didn't really think about it in context of what it meant in terms of the new Diablo four, which mm-hmm. literally go to any news outlet, go to any review site, YouTube channel, uh, anybody who spent any time with the game and everybody says the same thing is that this is the most Diablo Diablo game 
or that this feels different than all of the ones that have come before it because it does. It They went through a lot of lengths to make the world of Sanctuary feel like its own character, and we've talked about that at length. They've gone through a lot of pains to make all the NPCs uh, feel valued or in the world or people. Yeah. They yeah, feel yeah. like people who actually live in sanctuary, not just, you know, mm. hello traveler. I've got a book. Matt, Matt's you know? talking about <laughs> the, Matt's talking about the environmental storytelling, which is a huge, huge, huge deal. Uh, especially when you, you sit there and you think about in terms again of your main character, because they, and I think it's because they borrowed so much of it being an MMO and, you know, cause it is, it's an MMO as much as it is an ARPG. He, it just it was a to me a weird choice and i it's one i hope that they would go back and maybe if player numbers are declining that they would reconsider because i honestly do feel that if they were to announce by the way your your very first character or any character you want can experience seasonal content and progress through and just do the thing a bunch of people i think would start playing again yeah, I can see that. I have three things I think would help. Hit it. Uh, one of which was you just said. The other is the ability to replay the campaign. Absolutely. On a character that finished the campaign. On your main character, right? On your main character or yes. any other character that you has finished the campaign. I've got like all of my characters that are in the Eternal Realm have finished the campaign. Yeah. Um, even the level 31 did because you can, like I said, you can steamroll it uh, or you can take your time and explore. Like uh, one of my main actually didn't get out of the first zone, the Fractured Peaks, until I was in my 30s. Like I, I just because there was so much to do, and there's so many side quests, and there's so many story things. This is an absolutely super dense, absolutely packed game, and it's it's hampering itself by not allowing you to access all of it, mm-hmm. and in the ways that it is not allowing you. The fact that you have to start a new character to see the campaign again is just no. You should let us do it again. Just it, because it feels it would feel good if you could uh, after you've completed the campaign once, if you could do it again on a higher difficulty level, like, yeah, let us let us amp this up and play it again. Because yeah, let, me, let it, me do it on Nightmare. Yeah, there are yeah. so many interesting mechanics in encounters and fights in the campaign. And there's encounters and fights that, yeah, and there's encounters and fights that don't show up again. Yeah. They don't get translated into anything. You don't see them again. And some of the ones you do see again are just more interesting when you see them the first time. Like mm. the, the the one that is basically like a like a lichy, ghosty thing that makes swirly <laughs> things on the ground and makes walls come up and is just annoying. When you first fight it, it's 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 a it's a t- big part of the story. You watch the the abbot of this monastery get swallowed up yeah. and turned into this thing. And it's, it's a like, huge, huge one. It's a huge moment, right? Mm-hmm. It's a big a big beat. moment. Getting to see that again and having it be harder. Like, do you remember like how much you probably hated um Narel's mother by the time mm-hmm. you went through that fight? Yeah, yeah. Like, yep, yep, I've yep. said a million times when I was doing that fight, Narel would be like, I don't want you to die. And I'd be like, I'm back here. I just want you to know I do. I really <laughs> do. I want you to die. I want you to do it now. I'm Not actively no- I'm actively working on your destruction. Yes. I I like, every time you summon those three succubi and start raising all these these demons i hate you even more just just so we're clear i just want you to know i do want you to die uh but it's an it's stuff like that you should get to do it again i feel like they they kept the seasons from diablo 3 but they didn't keep adventure mode and campaign mode from yeah. Diablo 3. and i'm sorry they should have i mean they basically made the world into adventure mode and that's cool but you should have also kept con- camp- campaign mode because that's some of the best stuff in the game. Well, I think they kind of did try to keep adventure mode and I think, but not in the same way. And I think the, the uh, tree of whispers was supposed to be yeah. the, the analog to that. Right. Um, certainly got elements of it. And I, I actually, I'll, I'll tell you guys right now. I love the tree of whispers. It was how I, I was leveling. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love yeah. the Tree of Whispers. I think it's I think it's a fantastic addition to the game. But I still think you should be able to go back and replay the campaign. Agreed. Even not even not even for speed of leveling or anything, just because I think it is really good and I would like to get to see it again without having to create another new character. Because uh, at this point, guys, I have more characters on the Eternal Realm than I need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like there's just like there's like I think I got all of them. I think I can't get any more in there. You don't have <laughs> Eternal Realm two. So it's not like I can go to a different Eternal Realm and make more characters. So you're kind of putting me in a position where I either have to delete these guys, like 
I mean, I don't, I, I just want to see the campaign stuff again. And the last thing I think, which is something I think Liz has said in the past, is that one of her, like you were just saying it actually, now that I think about it, that <laughs> one of the best things about playing the character as you get them in level is you come up with weird builds. And you, yeah, you're, you're I like, I, I've been trying this this thing and I was doing it for a long time. I had a Thorns build that I loved. As, as you get up in level, that is the game. That's the big mm-hmm. part of the game is that kind of thing. Don't, don't, take it away from people like imagine if you had a season thing where they here's a, here's an idea for replaying the, the campaign and getting to bring your mid your main to seasons what if they made you go into the season they didn't reset your level but they put everything at like a higher level of difficulty a higher tier like mm-hmm. world tier f- i guess it would be world tier five and you start from level one at like the, the beginning of the campaign on that difficulty you've still got all your stuff but everything is reset and everything is you know I would be down for that because I would still be bringing my first character along. Mm. Uh, quite frankly, I've never gotten that face right again. Like, <laughs> for some reason, when I made the face for the first one, I mean, you're just picking faces. It's just three, four faces you pick, but I can never find it again. I just never get it right. I just don't. And I don't know why it drives me crazy, but that means whenever I'm not playing my original character, I'm like, your face is wrong. <laughs> like, I'm going to have to put a helmet over your face. Cause it's wrong. It's not how it's supposed to be. Well, I mean, so, that's the way my brain works. It's, it's I, I call it role play syndrome, right? Because like that's the way my brain works. Is <laughs> it's the same way with tabletop, right? Like even if like I play my uh, a character similar to one that I really really love in my brain, it's not the same character. So I have to like reconcile it with I'm really sorry. You are also very important to me. However, you are not the right way. Like it's it's just kind of how it works in my my weird brain. But it's the same way with Diablo or MMOs or or anything like that. Like I've Matt and I have this problem where we will roll a ton of, well, in Matt's case, warriors, uh, and in my case, shaman. I have shamans scattered on so many realms. I am at, yeah. like, I am at the character limit for WoW. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I did this at a time where I wasn't able to play cross-faction uh, or, or, I cross wasn't, server, really, or cross-server, mm-hmm. cross-realm. So I would roll a, a shaman version of loader on all these realms where my friends were to go play with them. And it was always the same thing. It's like, I, I love you because you're a shaman and I can do all the same things and you have almost the same gear and you're all the same level and, and everything else, but you're not right. <laughs> yeah. I, you don't have the, like, I remember when I first noticed this and I do actually want to ask Liz, um, if you've got ideas for things you would add to, to get, make seasons better. Do you want to do that? Do you have them now? I mean, I think what y'all have said, we need to be able to bring our, our characters forward. We need to be able to play the campaign more. You're exactly right, Matt. Campaign mode is what this game and needs. The other, the other thing with campaign, the the uh, seasonal stuff that I thought was a, an interesting choice is I had thought that during one of the earlier interviews after things had settled down and they were making progress, they mentioned that seasons were going to sort of bridge the gap story wise uh, between main campaign and any expansions that they were working on and releasing, mm-hmm. which was a neat idea. And again, very MMO y, because uh, that's what we were literally just talking about with WoW and all the, the interstitial patches between uh, tier content or between uh, expansions. Um, I would have, I think it would have been interesting to see them treat those seasons, give them a little more time to breathe and make them something a little more similar to that, that like is feeding into the next expansion maybe, or yeah, it it is. I mean, it's still early days to tell how much of this stuff is going to ever come up again, but I definitely don't think it feels, it doesn't feel like it's got anything to do with the the story. of Yeah. So all that to say longer, more impactful seasons, I think would also help. The story, the story of this season lighter than I expected it to be. It was, it felt a little skimpy. And I was really looking forward to story as well. So I think mm-hmm. I think this season kind of disappointed me on the story front. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It just it was it was pretty basic. I mean, it was a very short story. It was there and it was gone. You and- know what it reminded me of? Hmm. Uh, you guys haven't seen uh, Stranger Worlds yet this season, right? Not this I- season. Okay, so people who've actually seen it will know what I'm talking about. And you guys are going to think I'm being crazy, but the first episode of of season two was. It felt it was it was like if it was any other show, I would have thought it was a great episode. But considering how good season one had been and how good most of season two is after it, it feels like eh. mm, and yeah. And it's like I get it's you. not it's not like the season's quest line was bad. 
it's like it was, well, this could have been in any game. This didn't have to be Diablo. I mean, yes, okay, there's Malignants, but just because you got a cool goth sounding band name doesn't make it a Diablo class. <laughs> I was, was you know? going to say, like, I'm pretty sure Warhammer 40K, every game they have, there's something that says Malignant in it somewhere. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's like I said, it sounds like a band name. It doesn't sound <laughs> like it's specific to Diablo. And I actually feel like the Season of Blood is much more specific to Diablo. I haven't even, hmm. I don't know anything about the, the quest yet, but it just feels more like a Diablo thing. Like, whenever vampires show up in Diablo, it's always like this. It's always, yeah. I, I do think guys. I do think there's one one thing that's definitely kind of cut into the Season 1 enjoyment, is that they have announced Season 2 so soon. We've got another six weeks of season one, give mm-hmm. or take. Yeah. And they've already announced season two, the theme, the cool vampiric powers we're all going to get. They've given us this trailer that looks super rad. And I'm like, I watched that. And I'm like, wow, I want to be playing that. But that's, but we got this whole other thing. And actually I have this whole season to grind through. I have this whole battle pass to grind through. And this just sounds like a lot of hard work. And they really, the somehow they've managed to make this a real buzzkill. Announcing season two should have been really exciting. Yeah. And it really just made me feel worse about season one. I mean, I do think it was exciting. I was excited, but yeah. I also, I also think you're right in that it's like, you, maybe you should have waited another month before you told me yeah. what was coming. Seriously, so that I, so they have time to focus on what you've, you've given. Me. Uh-huh. But, yeah. And by that point, I might have hit that late end game stage where I was having fun again, making new builds and really enjoying it. And then I could have jumped that enjoyment to like the next stage of enjoyment. But it feels like it came out at a weird time. Yeah. I, I'm going to jump in with one last thing. I think part of the reason Diablo 4 season one is suffering is not actually Diablo 4's fault. I think it was season one was released at a time when lot of other games are coming out yeah we've got Baldur's Gate 3 we've got Starfield we have um uh which one is wow. coming this month not not only yeah. that but um you, you I mean people are still going back and playing uh Legend of Zelda uh, Breath of the oh, yeah. you know Br- Tears, Tears of the Kingdom, of the Kingdom. My wife, yeah my wife started playing Tears of the Kingdom recently and she's she's she, she described it as having a a love hate relationship where like there's so many cool things in the game but at the same time they made her naked practically like everything broke <laughs> so yeah there's there, people who, who are playing Tears of the Kingdom are the kind of people who want to play Zelda and Skyrim at the same time, which means they are very <laughs> determined people. Hmm. I, there has been, yeah, absolutely. I was going to mention that, but I forgot. And so, Liz, you are absolutely right. There is, it's, there's a lot out there and a lot coming. I've actually been playing a ton of Cyberpunk, getting yeah. ready for Cyberpunk. We're going to be getting Baldur's Gate. You know. We're going to be getting Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom Liberty in late September. I believe that's yeah, correct. The 26th. Oh, it's yeah. like. I mean, this is a golden like the past the past 30 days were like a golden era of rpg gameplay there have never been so oh, many great yeah. rpgs in such a short period of time and diablo 4 is giving us this great rpg single player story well campaign i kind of think of it as a single player story very story yeah, focused it is very and they're trying to keep us hyped about this but there are so many other great games out there it's hard to focus on this one yeah especially since i mean we haven't even talked about a lot of the double A and even single A games that are out or coming out that are like, you know, if not for these giants that are like, you know, like Shadow mm-hmm. of the Colossus in their way around. <laughs> I mean, in a world where Armored Core 6 is considered like it's it's cool and people want to hear about it, but it's way below the interest threshold of some other games. Mm-hmm, Armored Core mm-hmm. 6, which is, you know, From Software's original franchise. And, you know, people love From Software. Mm-hmm. But it's just, it can't break the water level. Um, this year, we saw the expansion to uh, Horizon um, Forbidden West, which was yeah. heralded as one of the best expansions of video games and, ever had. And coverage and people playing that has been buried because of so much, the, just the weight of everything else coming out. Yeah, like um, God of War Ragnarok, where that came and was it hit like a bomb, but then it got pushed over. There's just always something else coming out. So yeah, I absolutely agree with and, you on that one. Liz. And it also doesn't help with the time of year we're in too, right? So as the time of recording this, we're moving into September and like this is traditionally also where like a crush of games starts coming out because people are trying to get in in the next month or so for the holiday season start and like so it's also not gonna to, to help and i mean what do you have coming on the horizon now starfield's coming out soon isn't it yeah uh, next week yeah and i and, think and it may- starfield is also 
it's a day one game on Game Pass. Yeah, Dead Space. So the Dead Space remaster is coming out. It, you know, Assassin's Creed Mirage is coming out. Marvel Spider Man Two is coming out. Like you have uh, all of these games that people have been. Uh, the next Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy Sixteen is coming out. Like you have all these heavy hitters coming out in the time too. It's these are all going to entice people away from it. So you have to give them incentive to come back and play. You have to give them yeah, something. Yeah. It's, I, I think that we've covered this though, because there is one more yeah. question and I want to get to it before we leave, just because it is a sarcastic question <laughs> and I, I want us to talk about it. Uh, this one's from 6K. Sure, now we have hardcore WoW, but does that open the door to ultimate hardcore WoW where you have to buy the game again after every time you die? If I had to buy the game again after every time I died, I would have bought the game 500,000 times. So <laughs> I only hope you are joking because if this ever happened, I I mean, I wouldn't play it. Like, oh my God, no, I wouldn't. Also, but, I raid with six. I can attest to uh, the number of deaths. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that that would be hard on all of us. Like, yeah, I, I have not recently gone into Warcraft and looked at the, the achievement screen where it tells you, this is how many times you've died. But it's... It's almost, it's at least in the high five figures. I mean, I've been playing this game for so long. Mm -hmm. I've been playing the same character for so long. You've probably, if you, if you played in Miss, if you played in uh, a Burning Crusade, you've been playing before they put in achievements because they put in achievements at the end of Burning Crusade. Mm -hmm. So you died a bunch of times that didn't get tracked. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's right. Believe me, my one to sixty journey in WoW original vanilla, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, was festooned with with comical deaths. I remember the time that I was trying to get an alliance character to Shadowfang Keep because we wanted to run the dungeon, oh, and yes. somehow oh, I yeah. angered the sons of Arugal and spent an hour just being farmed by them, <laughs> just just dying constantly to the point where horde people started to feel bad for me. Like some Torrent Druid showed up and started helping me just because he felt bad. He couldn't heal me, so he just started nuking the sons of Arugal. But yeah, it's, no, no. That, that I'm getting sweaty hands just thinking about this. <laughs> but uh, I guess that's going to be it. I think you think, Joe. Yeah. Yeah, I think that I think that does us uh, for today. Unless there's anything else either of you want to add, Liz. Uh, nope, nope. I think we've we've covered all of our topics somehow in an hour, an hour ish. Yeah, we were we, efficient we, today. Yeah, we were a little wow. late to start, so yes. Uh, Joe, I'm going to ask you to do the thing. Blizzard Watch is made possible due to the generous contributions at patreon.com slash blizzardwatch. Your continued support means this podcast site and community is able to thrive and grow. Blizzard Watch supporters enjoy exclusive benefits like early access to the podcast, better chance of having your question answered on our podcast for the queue, and an ads-free site experience. Thank you very much, Joe. Um, thank you to both Joe and Liz for being here and helping us, you know, get another show down. Um, and thank you to everybody who listens. Um, this has been the Blizzard Watch podcast, and we're going to be back next. I hope. <laughs>